course, it's mostly Amy on <laughs> behind the camera. Yeah, hello, it's food time. Okay, we are doing spaghetti squash with pesto and chicken. Super yummy. We're doing an Asian chicken wrap. Very good. Turkey. And, oh, it's turkey. <laughs> it's turkey. Turkey. It's turkey. I was like, chicken. Oh, yeah, turkey. A Asian chicken wrap. Our turkey wrap. And then we're doing enchiladas with zucchini. So all of you people that are trying to stay away from grains or just corn in general, good option. You got that? Yeah. yeah. And uh, zucchini is starting to proliferate in our <laughs> yes. gardens, I've heard. Yes. So we're going to be doing several zucchini dishes over the next few weeks because mm -hmm. we need to use the yummy stuff up. Yep. And zucchini bread too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, here you go. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys. I just, just turned the oven on. We're going to be getting our spaghetti squash into the oven. The thing that I now love about spaghetti squash, when I first learned about it and was trying to cook it, I didn't like it because it was really hard to prep because I was cutting the ends off and cutting it in half. And when it's raw, that's really hard. So I was talking to a friend a few years back and she's like, oh, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is puncture the skin, set your oven at 400 and put it in for an hour and you've got it soft, you can cut it easily. So we're gonna start with that. So just as we're finishing our show, I think, I'll be pulling the spaghetti squash out and showing you what the inside looks at and how easy it is to cut when that is not raw. So we're gonna wait a few more minutes to that heat up and then we'll get that in there. Next th thing that we should be thinking about is starting our chicken for the enchiladas because it will take 35 minutes in the Instant Pot. Um, we're gonna have it shredded up but so the instructions you'll see is to put a little bit of your enchilada sauce in there. We've chosen red and um, it is on my list to create an enchilada sauce. So be looking out for that in the next couple of months um, because wouldn't it be ideal? Although for meal prepping, this is easy. So I just put a bit in there, making sure it's all stirred in. We used chicken tenders today because that's what we had. And uh, trying to be sensitive to sticking with what's in our freezer and getting those things used up. So if you have tenders or thighs or breasts, whatever, that will work. About two pounds is good enough to make a nine by nine dish. If you want a little bit more, you'll have uh, add another pound or so to that, and then it freezes. So if you have leftover innards, you can freeze it and make them again. We're going to be doing that with some zucchini, which I'll just pull over because it's so cool looking. So we couldn't find zucchini at the grocery store and we uh, were given a couple of very large zucchinis from a friend, so I was able to cut these. Normally you wouldn't want them this big, although I'm kind of thinking this might turn out really well because the slight seedy part is so watered down. But look at these cool slices. So what we're actually going to do, and I'll demonstrate later, is we're gonna stack them like that and make our very own, oh, see, as they fall apart, tortilla. Isn't that cool? Then we'll wrap up our stuff in there. So, also do a little demo on the, the cutting of this fun stuff. But, that's just so fun, I wanted to show it. Good luck. Mm. Our oven's getting hot. Um, so let's get the lid on this, buddy. This is my little baby Instapot, which I love, because you can do little mounts. We're gonna do, Where's my, oh, there's not a folder here. Let's do the meat. I think that's 45, nope. You know, the difference between the settings with the different, the poultry and the rice, and, it's only the time. Some of them are set, like I noticed when you set rice, you can't, oop, and it's going without me. We're gonna cancel that. You can't change the set on the rice number. I don't know why, at least on my older machine. But the only difference of them is the time. So. Think of the time that you want. If you know your buttons well, then you can push them. Um, or you can just do your pressure wash, or <laughs> pressure wash. Oh, we're washing the car today. No, pressure cook and set it for 35 minutes. That'll give us a good shred. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this again. And let's see, chili beans, there we go. Oops, up. 35 minutes is the magic number for two pounds of chicken in there, especially since they're tenders. Make sure your little knobby is set to not vent. Everything's locked down. And there it goes, ready to set to go. Awesome. So I'm going to set this aside for who we'll use later. You guys 
can I set up for that stuff? Next, let's think about our turkey aging cups. And we call them cups because we're going to be putting them into some butter lettuce. And when you get your butter lettuce, you want to take two leaves off, preferably a larger and a smaller, and you set them, this is the spine like it was on the butter lettuce, you pull those off and then you fit them together like that, and you put your stuff in this way and then you can wrap it up. You are probably going to have to use two hands because they fall apart easy, but they're super yummy and totally worth it. Let's throw this in there. Oops. How about wraps? That one. That baby in there. Away the that goes. I'm going to set the timer for. in it and for it to go in not too squishy and the thing about spaghetti squash some people don't have any experience with it it's really cool because if you cook it right you're shredding out and it turns into a noodle type look and if you can have them softer or crunchier they're al dente and sometimes people won't even notice that it's not really spaghetti um, children more but it's kind of fun to eat because I know my nephews you put some on the plate and they get to play in it if you don't have sauces on it. It's kind of a thing. It's like stringy. Who doesn't like to play with their food a little bit, right? It's good stuff. So for our turkey stuff, we are going to chop up a little bit of garlic. Who do we have with us today, Pam? Oh, we have Beth and Hi. Annette and... Somebody really, really, let's see. Came in and said hi. We love Kristen it. and Nicole and Kathy. Nice. Hi, guys. Do you know if you would uh, tag Tamar for me? I know she wanted to be on today. I don't think we're friends, so I don't know if that works. Uh. Tamar. Boosie. Boosie. <laughs> okay, here's our pot, medium high, get our lovely avocado oil, this is actually a coconut and avocado blend, a little bit of that in our pot, got our sauces here, on the list, actually I realized on the shopping list I didn't put the sauces, so my mistake, I'm sorry for that, uh, but you're going to need the sweet chili sauce, a tamari or coconut aminos, um, and then a seasoned rice wine vinegar. Also, I had hoisin sauce on the list, and we don't have hoisin sauce. And since it wasn't on the list, Pam didn't know to get it. So, my apologies for that. We'll make sure she has it. Um, but, if not, go with the flow. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, so, we've got that. You know, that's curry. So, mm, mushrooms. Here we go, mushrooms. I say to grind them small because then they are kind of hidden in there. If you don't have people that like mushrooms in your house, then you'll want to do that. I break them up like this and stick them into our lovely ninja. The reason we break them is because then they have some sharp edges that the blade will catch. Just like that. And we've noticed our carrots are a little bit small. They're hard to julienne when it's like that, so the recipe says to julienne them, but the best thing we're actually just going to ninja them as well. And the reason why I pulse them is because it gives them a chance to fall into the blades. Rather than if they're constantly going, they kind of stay up. So I kind of overfilled it, but we'll make this work. Stuff them down in there. Very yummy. Good stuff. really 
really fun and simple. And you can actually put all kinds of different veggies in there. Um, and that's good. That will chop in a second. Get this going. Let that smell good. So you put the garlic in and you let the vapors kind of fill the room because everybody loves garlic, right? It's uh, really good to let them sizzle in there and then when they start to try and turn translucent a little tiny bit, then you can add your other stuff. And I'm going to grab the salt. Are we good? Just add a tap. dark spot in the corner. Uh-oh. We're working on the lighting. We've done a lot better. I was looking at some of our older videos and we've done really good. That's not. Okay. I said the julienne and the peppers, which is really simple. I used the small julienne and I cut these kind of in quarters like this. Put on your glove. Dandy, dandy glove. And you need to decide while you're doing this how um, cooked do you like your veggies? Remember, if you're going to be reheating this, you always want to consider at what stage you want them cooked once you reheat them. So that will de determine how far you cook them while you're prepping them. And these peppers, see how lovely that is? We don't really need to cook them. So we're going to have them set aside. Oh, Because they're sliced so small, they let the flavors out really well like this. I'm going to put the mushrooms in. It's kind of cooked down a bit, and so we'll just kind of melding them into the flavors. The garlic. Esther's watching.
the right instructions. I it put the header on them wrong. Freya's watching. Hi, Freya. You missed the pepper trick, but I'm going to do more. All right. When our mushrooms are about half cooked, lovely, we're going to throw in our turkey. She has the pepper down, pepper trick Woo! down. She wants new ones. New, new, new tricks? Teach me more, she said. All right. So, then I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. I'm gonna put our peppers into the bowl here. Once this is cooked, I'm gonna put them in after this off the heat. And that'll just kind of melt the flavors into it. And then when you reheat it, it'll do even better. So, I think these carrots, since they're so small, I'm either going to chop them in here. Let's do one and see how that works. Do this one. The new one is so great because when you want something that's just small chop, if you just pulse it, Freya, do you have a mandolin? Lori Smith is watching too. Hi, Lori. Is it Lori or Laura? I think it's Laura. Laura. Hi, Laura. All right. Next, we're going to chop our veggies that will go in with our enchiladas while this is still cooking. She said, heck no. Remember, her family won't let her. Ah, gotta get you a glove, then you'll be fine. All right, here's Freya's trick, which Freya, since you've got this down, we should have you come in. Show us your skills. Seeds that are hot. So if you've touched seeds, 
sneezed quite a bit, you want to go and wash your hands so that you don't then touch your face or anything else because it will get spicy. Freya said, you should see the scarves on my hands from knives. Oh, dear. <laughs> Maybe you need a glove for the knives, Always, too. Always, <laughs> right? Get a glove for the knives. Okay, let's see. Let's see how much we have left. Hey, Kirby. <laughs> so there's my vacuum cleaner. I, there's some carrots on the ground over here, Tucker. I left them just for you. Said, hola. Hola. So, Robin's watching. Hi, Robin. We've got a good group today. Yeah. Everybody's in because it's hot. <laughs> got our poblano here. So, what you can do if you want the juices of the peppers to really be melted into your enchiladas is cook the peppers. Um, throw the peppers in with the meat. Before you just cook them in the Instapot. I kind of like them so that you can still sense the texture of them, and that will totally obliterate the texture. But I like them so that you can still kind of have the sense that there's some peppers in there. So we're going to keep everything raw in the beginning, mix it in once the chicken is done with the cheese as well, and that's going to be our 
base for making the enchiladas. We're going to do that with all these lovely peppers. And you can also put zucchini in this because it, it <laughs> will hide really well. And mushrooms. Just get creative. Do all kinds of hiding. Okay. More veggies. The more veggies we can get into our bodies, the better our immune systems are, the stronger they are, the better they function, and then we can fight all of this silly stuff that's flying around us these days. Hmm? Also makes you feel better for some reason. We have a little extra zucchini if you want to chop some up. Ooh, yeah, we can do that. Let's do that. All right, this Karen's is Karen's watching too. Hi, Karen. Chop that up a bit. All right. Dennis is watching too, but he's, Hi, Dennis. he's live watching. <laughs> the live audience. Live audience. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. You know me, guys. I gave you measurements. They're spot on, I promise. But I like doing this. <laughs> so, also because I put a pound and a half. Let's see how this is going. spices because the ground beef has a stronger uh, flavor and so you just need a little bit more with the ground beef as opposed to this. Ooh, smell that. Mm. Okay, let's turn off the heat and put in all our lovely veggies. This made a lot. That's good. Kyle's back. What? Oh yeah, you're Kyle. I'm Kyle back. Oh. Yes, we're feeding more this week. Look how lovely that is. As I spill it on the floor. That's okay. Okay guys. Yellow. See that? Then we're gonna add the green into there. That's gonna be pretty too. Red and orange and green. That mixed in. Then you just take a bit of this and you wrap it in the cups and you're good to go. If you want to add a little bit more spice to it, sauce, once you have it made, use my stir fry sauce. That would be a perfect complement to that. Um, or you can make up a combination in a bowl of this and add that as well. But the stir fry sauce with the sesame seed would be good. And then I said to uh, adorn, adorn, garnish, this when you make it with toasted sesame seeds, and it's voila, perfect. All right, two enchiladas and more peppers. And onions, how many minutes? 24. 24 minutes there, 28 there, perfect. Let's get this going, and then we'll also be prepping our chicken for the pesto. And you guys, did you make the pesto from last week that we did for getting saucy? That's what you need to use on the spaghetti squash this week, this time. So, let's get these out of here. Seeds. You don't have to add the jalapeno, it just adds an element of spice, and we know that we like it, so that's good. If you want to keep it milder, don't add the jalapeno. If you want to keep it even milder than that, don't add the poblano, just use regular sweet peppers and you will be good to go. And I'm not doing much of this, just a little tiny bit, so it's a long way. Sarah's watching. Hi, Sarah. Freya said move over, Julia Childs. We've got Amy in our yes. kitchen. <laughs> That's me. Here we go. I think it's time that I start getting different colored hats. I was putting on my white hat today and I got to choose a different my aprons I love changing, and I was like, you know, it might be time to keep color going to get some more fun hats. You have your Italian hat. I do have my Italian hat. I need to do that. Okay, so here we go. Oh, and I still have some more pepper. All right, and barbecue season is upon us. Let's start doing some more 
barbecue stuff. We're going to be doing some whole chickens. Anybody ever do, has anybody ever done the beer can chicken? I actually got to play with that this weekend a bit, and it turned out really well. And there's no alcohol in the food, just like when you cook with wine, it all dissipates. So um, if you're open to it, we might try that. I will think about an alternative, but it's the, that's the fermentation of it that works. I wonder if a kombucha would work. Oh, it would need to be a rather different one. This onion is huge. We had leftover onion from last week, so since they're so big, that's all I needed. I am so going to knock that off. All right. You want to make these, if you're not cooking them with that, and they're going to be somewhat cooked because we will be putting this in the oven, just small, smaller, um, a fine chop. There we go. I'm working right now on the lingui language, lingua, for the and different definitions of different ideas for chopping this up for my book right now. And it's been kind of funny to be like, oh yeah, I gotta write that in there. And, oh, what is a braise and a blanche and a thing? So there's all these different terms. If you have a term you'd like me to have defined in the book, let me know. I'm trying to, when I write the recipes, go back and be like, okay, I need to define what this is and what that is. So we know what these silly things mean, right? You could also do this fine chop of all these fine things in the Ninja if you wanted them even smaller. The Ninja can be your friend for hiding vegetables and getting them super small and not cutting your fingers. So. There you go. Freya, do you have a Freya. ninja? Yeah, Freya, you need a ninja. You can't cut unless you're washing it. As Pam found out, <laughs> sometimes washing the sharp utensil is more dangerous than using the sharp utensil. So, the trick, if you have a ninja, never put your fingers, even if a sponge, use a brush or use the tip of the sponge because it's, it's tricky and it's super sharp, which is good for our cooking. All right, I got all that done. I got all this done. I got this done. Woo! We're fast, guys. We're super fast. Um, chicken's going. That's going. Let's do this. We're going to show you how to do more. This over here. Oh, and we got to do the chicken. Where did my... There it is. the side of a grater. Yes. So do you have, what do you have that we can demonstrate with? My grater's right down here. Okay. Also looking here. Let's see other ideas. Ah, that's the one I want. Ooh, actually. Wider. Nope. So we've got those. Let's see. The grater. Ooh. Maybe that one. Okay, I'm going to try all of these. Is that the same? show. Yeah, <laughs> that would be not fun. So I hold it up here so they kind of fall down. And they're a little bit one-sided now that I shaved off that one part. But. This is where having the glove on comes very handy 
indeed. So we're going to take this. I think this is enough. If not, we will do other stuff. But let's chop up some of our zucchini to go in the enchiladas. And we have a birthday girl that usually watches it. I don't know yeah, if she's on Diane. yet. Miss Diane's birthday. She's probably busy partying and not cooking for her birthday. Right? Probably. That's the best way to go. Okay. Ooh, let's put some zucchini in that. And I'm going to do this. So I'm going to get the ninja to shred this up. Nice and fine. And we're going to hide some in enchiladas and the Asian cups. Because why not? Okay, this will go in the Asian cups because it's already got make sure the blades in there. When you first start using it, you will throw stuff in there without the blades. You're like, why isn't this working? Okay. So a little bit of that. Another option is if you really have to hide it, you can peel the skin off so it's not the dark green, it's light green, and then it just blends with anything. Exactly. Melts right in. There we go. See? This is just adding to the prettiness. Ooh, that smells so good. I'm going to take a good bite. <laughs> All right. Let's get these in here. Although, if you can, leave the skin because that's where the most nutrients are in the dark green. Just saying, if you really have to hide things, we don't have to hide veggies in our family. <laughs> lucky, lucky. Okay, now we have some zucchini to add to our enchiladas. We love adding vegetables. This is so cool. So yummy. And we might even have some filling left over because we got to fill it up with some good veggies. There we go. You can also put mushrooms in the enchiladas. start to dry out a bit and you can tell that it's darkening and kind of getting browned and that's a good sign. So we've got 17 more minutes. It's really going to be doing well in that time. And we have just a few more minutes on these lovelies. So let's pull over our zucchini and our tray. And we can start with the Also, not use meat 
and to make really good things. And one of my clients, she actually made the zucchini, or the zucchini, the enchilada in, in size. She made her husband's one with the tortillas, and she used thin sliced deli turkey to roll hers up and then put the cheese on there so she wouldn't be eating the grains. So I thought that was very creative, and she said it tasted wonderful. So hey. Another thing you can do if you don't want to worry about the rolling of it is you just start layering just like the lasagna. But we're going to roll because it's pretty. So the first thing I do is put them together like this. You can put that one here. You're going to make it kind of the size of a tortilla like I showed you earlier. And they do stick together pretty well. So you set those up. And here we go. One. If they're thinner, you might put four in there. These are nice and wide. I'm just going to have these set here. Pretty. And we're just going to put some stuff in there and roll it up like this. Look. Your finger. Stick it in there. Probably this way, depending on what how what size you do. There you go. That's going to be easy and yummy. But almost done. We're going to put some of the what's the cheese? It's not the comita. It's queso the queso fresco inside. But look at all this good stuff. We are making a big batch of it. This is yummy. That's good. Then you can share it with friends. When you have extras, invite somebody over for dinner on the patio, spread apart for distancing, you can do this. It's good stuff. We need to be out there. Oh, you know what we need to do now? Hmm. While we're waiting, I'm going to move this really quick over here. And we're going to prepare our chicken to go into the oven as soon as the other stuff comes out. So. We had our chicken salt curing for the afternoon, which just kind of tenderizes it a little bit. Then I'm going to put my breasts down here. Two, three. Make sure there's no back album things. These are really nice. Okay. Freya and said you can share with her. <laughs> okay. Me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, you 
<laughs> who are, who are you getting an answer from? <laughs> yes, too much is not good. Yes, too much of salt is never Too much of a good thing is not. Look, we've got seven minutes left. We're waiting. We could wash dishes, but what's the fun of that? Normally, that's what I would be doing. When I'm in clients' kitchens, I always ask, if I have a little bit of free time, do you mind if I clean? And I haven't once had somebody say, no, please don't. So <laughs> I clean out refrigerators and spice jars, spice racks, and all kinds of stuff. So do we want to tell them about our Ooh, yes. A sneak peek. We've been working on something that's going to be super cool. And so the whole month of September, we're going to have our focus and our cooking class is going to be for preparing for a cleanse. So cleansing is, and detoxing is done best in the fall. And we are going to do a 21 or 28 day. 21. 21. 21 doesn't seem so overwhelming. So a 21 day food cleanse, and we're going to have uh, a whole manual of recipes, and my, rec my cooking class is going to coordinate with those recipes, and we're gonna have uh, some calls, some group calls for that, and just a really, a lot of um, accountability and encouragement in a group, and we're getting prepared to uh, launch that. So our first, positions will be, spots will be open to you that support us every week with this, and we thank you for that, so we're having that open, and we, are we talking about our special guest? No, never mind, <laughs> right back to, no, we can't do that, okay, don't know about a special, but it's coming, so stay tuned, we have a special, because we love you guys, um, and we want to make this super doable for everybody, so we're going to be doing it as well, so that we are in a big group. We're gonna have our tribe, and maybe at the end we can have a party where I feed everybody. <laughs> they all won't be local, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But I can dream. So, um, oh, and you guys, next week, speaking of not being local, I am gonna be in somebody else's kitchen. So, my good friend and a client of mine that has, she was my very first client, so I've had her for almost seven years. Um, I'm going to go visit her. She's moved away to the coast, and I'm going to cook in her kitchen for next Monday class, and then we'll be preparing the food that she asks for. So you'll be getting those recipes and being able to cook with me, but I'm really excited because I want to start being able to cook in other people's kitchens and show that on the video to kind of get a feel for the changes that happen when you're in somebody else's kitchen or a vacation kitchen and how you can still make things work simply. Like if you notice when I'm cooking, I have bowls, I use one knife, and I use maybe two different spoons. The simpler you can keep things, the better. So being able to do that, obviously it's nice to have all the different utensils and we keep them around because they're lovely, but you can go into somebody else's kitchen, you can go on a vacation kitchen and cook and not be uh, hesitant to do that. So stay tuned, I'm really excited will be in Meat Hearts, Oregon, and I won't have Miss Pan with me, but she'll be supporting me from wherever she's at in the world. <laughs> and I'll be here. She'll be at home for once. It's <laughs> gonna be contrario. She's gonna be here and I am going to be gone, but still cooking for you guys because I love you. And yes, so stay tuned for that. And there we go. And what else do we have to say? Not much. I need ideas for recipes. I am starting to run out of all my recipes that I do on a regular basis, and so I'm looking for spices that you want to learn to use, different kinds of ethnic foods, and I can let you know if they are even something you can do in a food prep situation or something you need to do on a one in the evening that moment, or I can even help you decide what can be prepped so that you can make those things. But a lot of things you can't really cook and serve later. You have to cook and serve now. So figuring out those recipes, I would love to help anybody who has questions on that um, or any suggestions for what recipes you'd like to see. Any kind of um, genres of food is good. Um, different spices that you like, that you want to use. 
We picked up that amazing spice jar when you were traveling and it has this spices and you've never used it <laughs> because you don't know where to put it on. Let me know and I will create a recipe for you. We, that would be really fun. I would love to do that. And maybe I'll come do it in your kitchen. Okay, I'm like, that's it. Right. <laughs> then who's going to cook for me? <laughs> yeah. Who's going to cook for me? So uh, that's okay. We'll just make sure that everybody's included in this. But yes, different spices. I know that I do the same thing. I pick up a spice because wow, that looks really good and sounds really good. And then you never use it because it's not part of your regular repertoire. So let's create some stuff and let's get our minds together and do that and make it fun. Because being in the kitchen should be fun and fast and then it will be fabulous. That's my saying. And it should bring you joy if they have a recipe that may not be on the healthiest side, oh, then yeah. we can also work on that too. Absolutely. You have your favorite grandma's recipe, and we want to try to change it to the healthiest version we can without uh, jeopardizing the flavor and texture, then let's work on that. I'm happy to look at something. Although I have a challenge that I've never actually uh, come through on, and that's cinnamon rolls. So I need to find a cinnamon roll recipe that's gluten free and uh, fulfill somebody's just request for that. So Freya said, what about curries? Indian food also, what can you do with turmeric? Oh, turmeric, yes. So I was actually thinking this month, or next month, because we're at the end of this month, um, of doing like a tikka masala, which is Indian. Also, we could do some curries. I don't, I've only done the turkey curry, I guess. Have I not done coconut curry? I don't think so. Okay. That will be on the menu for next month. Thank you. Uh, definitely a good idea. Curries, they're so simple, so lovely. And the same, it's noisy. The same mix that I use to make the turkey curry mayonnaise, which is a hot curry, sweet curry, and tandoori from um, Penzi's, is what I like to use to make coconut curry. However, I know there's quite a few different mixes. I have a client that got some from the market in Portland, I think, and they're really good. Curries are kind of something that are from each region. They're a mix of spices. So they have the turmeric and they have all kinds of other things in them. So um, you'll find a curry powder that has all these different things and it's different than this other brand of curry powders because there's different levels of the spices that they put into them. And that's the same way if you found in the regions where they uh, make the curries, a lot of Indian and um, I think even in the Thai regions, each region kind of has its own thing. Maybe even each family has its own mix. It's like Italy. They all have their own uh, salami or spice mix for different meats and braising things and also their different herb blends for making their sauces. So it's kind of like that. So finding one that you like, don't, if you find one you don't like, don't give up, keep trying. And I know there's some of the market, in, even in Fred Meyer Safeway, that are pastes in jars, those are really good. Also the Asian market down on 82nd has some that are a, a, a real solid paste that's really good and I've used those before. So let's get on a dialogue. What kind of curries do you guys like that you have found that you enjoy that are maybe not too spicy but have really good flavor? I would love to understand what you like and then start creating some more dishes from that. Robin wants Indian food too. Indian food. I haven't done much with that, so you'll have to do that. That's a good thing. I'll have to look into that. I'm trying to think, isn't tikka masala? That's Co Indian. Coconut curry, yeah. Coconut curry, yeah. That's what Robin wants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I can do that. That'll be on the list next month, for sure. And then what kind of vegetables? I know some people like the green beans or the cauliflower, carrots. I'll put a list of all the different ones that can go into it, but usually there's a difference. But there's usually a base of onion and carrot. And then some of my clients have liked peas and green beans. Some have liked cauliflower. Um, I don't know that we do broccoli much. I like pineapple in my curry. Pineapple in the curry. 
Oh, or mango curry. That sounds good. And mango curry. Look at all these amazing combinations. Let me know what else we can put into them. And I will add that to the recipe and shopping list to make it simple for you. But always remember too, when I list some of the stuff and I'll put like optional or if there's vegetables you don't like or something you don't like in there, please reach out and ask me what alternative we, you, you can put in there. That's not a problem at all. I love figuring out how to uh, make a recipe specific to somebody's needs. So that's pretty easy for me to do. All right, we've got four minutes and three minutes. No, two seconds. Two seconds. Woo! How cool is that? Perfect timing. All right. And it's still not done. So I was only able to get a little bit of the tip in, and you can still feel it's pretty firm. So I'm going to go for another 20 minutes timer and keep an eye on it while we got that going. So we'll do a go. video of it later because yeah, we won't be live in 20 minutes. Live. And so the chicken, guys, it's like I always do. You're going to roast it 425 minutes. And when it's not squishy anymore with your tongs, when it's pretty warm, that's when you do it. So if you cover it, let the juices soak in, cut it up, we will sh show a, a picture of how to put the pesto and the spaghetti squash and the chicken all together in a meal. Then you can um, garnish that with more cheese and some pine nuts if you want, more leaves of basil. Mm -hmm. Yummy stuff. Okay, what do we got here? Let's do our enchiladas. I bring this back. Dun, 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 dun. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna let it release. because it's still boiling to siphon off of it. Just make sure everything's kind of broken up. I think next week we're going to do carnitas with an extra pot in the oven. That'll be yummy. Which you can also make into enchiladas or tacos making meats like this is that you can make a whole variety of things from them. So make a big pot of it and then have all kinds of different yummy stuff. You can have a Mexican week, you can have an Italian week, or like we've done in the past, you can shred a whole thing of chicken like this that only has salt and pepper on it. And then you separate some into a dish with enchilada sauce to make your enchiladas, some into a dish with barbecue so you can have your coleslaw and shredded barbecue uh, chicken. And uh, you can make sloppy joes out of it like that. It's really awesome. You can do the same thing with ground meat. I mean, possibilities are endless. So let's get all our yumminess into here. I'm going to do the cheese first so it melts pretty well. really awesome creaminess that 
I discovered and I love. So that's my own adaptation. Because you know, you just can't have enough tea. You can also, if you're trying to avoid dairy, and uh, but you're okay with goat cheese, you can put a shed. Or I think the cojita is made from goat cheese as well, goat milk. Or you can get it in goat milk flavor. Oh my gosh, this is so yummy. And then we're going to put all this veggie in there. Melt. <laughs> You're going to need a bigger bowl. I know, right? I thought I, I was thinking that maybe Instant Pot would be fine. Bye, Robin. She's leaving us. Do you want me to get a big bowl? No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll just make it quick. I like, sometimes when they're smaller, we're just going to push this around. The cool thing about this is I do the push and go in circles. Circle, circle. But it's hot, so get a glove, get a towel. Look, I can't even see the chicken yet. There we go. This is more veggie than chicken, which is good. Here we go. It's all mixed in. And again, when you have so many different veggies, it's so pretty. I've got red and green and white. I don't even want to say what that reminds me of because it's July. But colors like that are always good, right? You can also put tomatoes in there, all kinds of good stuff. Could be Italian. It could be Italian. Look at it. Red, white, and green. All right, now you saw we have our lovely things here. Use a spoon. Oh yeah, let's put a little bit of this in here too. Just for some flavor. And that smells good. You can also use red or uh, green sauce. So if I make my own sauce, which one should I work on first? The green or the red? Who wants what? I also need to make my own salsa verde. Working on that. Or getting saucy stuff is fun. Okay, let's take a nice scoop of this. I think I said about a quarter cup. Also depends on how big this has turned out to be. So we want them a little bit stuffed. Yumminess. And can we see this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. We're just gonna roll it up. It's juicy. Don't worry. Stick her in like that. We're going to do all these and then we're going to cover it with cheese and more sauce. It's going to be awesome. So. Freya said start with green. All right. <laughs> Freya, thank you. You spoke up first. We're going to start with green. This is easy peasy. What do we have left? Nothing. That's it. This is it. So let's get this wrapped up. I'm gonna put this third one here. Show you what a nice big bubble there. Roll it up. How long will you cook that for? This will be in the oven at 350 for 35 minutes. Till it's bubbly around the sides. When you have stuff that's already mostly cooked, everything in it's cooked, you're just melting together all the flavors. 350, 25 to 35 minutes, or until bubbly. That's the basic standard for that. Um, and away we go. I just put some in my mouth. Ah. Here we go, guys. We got zucchini enchiladas, spaghetti squash with pesto and grilled chicken, or roasted chicken, and Asian lettuce cups. And we will show you how to put those together in short videos as we make them ourselves, all right? Love you.
Thank you for being here. I appreciate you, and I can't wait to see you next week.